Hello, everybody. <laughs> My presentation aims to examine to what extent drawing can be considered as an emancipatory practice, a practice of subversion or resistance. It's embedded, embedded in a research project that includes different forms of research, studio time, artistic research, and theoretical writing, and also a series of 25 to 30 encounters with artists on their drawing practice. When I speak of drawing, I refer to an expanded concept of drawing, of course, a notion of drawing which challenges, pushes, or even overcomes its boundaries and historical definitions. Drawing is often underestimated. John had just talked about it. It's underrated by the art market. It's kind of marginalized, less sexy, not contemporary enough, kind of old school. Drawing has been very often positioned in the margins of the art system. But the margin of a system are also very often an interface, an interface to new and unknown things. In that sense, the position of drawing is a potential. With curiosity and openness, drawing seeks and explores the interfaces to other fields. With octopus-like graphic tentacles, drawing seeks the dialogue with sculpture and architecture, sneaks into painting, it grows into space, it transforms itself into performative gestures or musical notations. Drawing and science have a long shared history. That's one reason why we are here today. And especially the border between writing and drawing is particularly fragile. We all know how quickly like the first inches of a line drawn or written by a hesitating hand balancing like a tightrope walker can become a word or an image, a visual or verbal sign. Drawing creates a permeable interface between visual and verbal expression, visual and verbal research, and also between theoretical and artistic practice, as in the case of my presentation here. Drawing in any case for me is more an end attitude than a medium, or at least a medium and an attitude at the same time. An attitude, a position to perceive the world that surrounds us with dedication and attention. Drawing as an antenna. Drawing as a seismographic trace that makes visible the tremblings and shiverings within us and around us. That sounds well, that does not sound very radical or new, I know, but when we look at the contemporary art world and we can see that drawing is really often mainly discussed on a, under formal or formalistic aspects. And even today, contemporary drawing is often reduced, too often reduced, in my opinion, to its technicity or visual qualities. Let's have a random look at some exhibition titles or catalogs. Lines. Linea, from Umriss to Abstraktion. Between the lines. Between the lines of contemporary art. Besides the lines of contemporary art. Online. Pé-papier, ligne, line, linear. Walk the line, ligne de chance, drawing the line, crossing the line, <laughs> the bottom line, gegen den Strich, line works, along the lines. 
Walking past the spines of a drawing shelf in a library, one could almost get the impression that artists who draw make the form of drawing the exclusive content. One could get the impression while plunging into the materiality and texture of a drawn line and a paper, those artists forget the world around them. Don't get me wrong. This is a beautiful quality of drawing. I love drawing for these moments of concentration. I love drawing for its subtle materiality. But these are not the only potentials that drawing offer. So today I'd like to suggest another perspective on drawing. The space of drawing as a space of freedom, subversion and resistance. Let's go back here. As contemporary drawing is regularly considered as a non-political space, those kind of words, freedom, subversion, or resistance, are not very often used when it comes to drawing. Yet drawing in its minimalist and simplest form, the drawing of a line itself, is basically a political or at least a social gesture. The line that Mark and Mark's hierarchy. A drawn line connects. A drawn line separates. A drawn line marks, marks hierarchies and makes power structures visible. I would suggest starting from the inside to have a look at what is drawn and how it's drawn and how the how and the what are linked. Let's have a look at the ironic angry stroke of Dan Payoshi, who under Ceausescu <laughs> traded his academic classical painting career for the production of reduced comic-like drawings which were easily, which more easily made it through censorship because they were not taken seriously. Or let's have a look at the political dimension of the diversity of the strokes and handwritings in the demonstration drawings commissioned by Rikrit Tiravanja. For this project, Rikrit gave about 150 press images to 60 artists from Thailand, his native country, who were in turn paid by him to draw the images. There are lines that make your stomach turn, like the sharp writing strokes of the drawings by Seiya Stoika, in which she captures the atrocities of the Nazis and life and survival in the concentration camps. We can also look at the brutal coolness of Paras to Farua's computer drawings, which welcome us from afar with an ornamental like wallpaper motif that, once we get closer, turns out to be a series of torture scenes. Fernando Bryce uses almost documentary, a documentary style of drawing when he deals with the traces European colon, colonial politics and imperialism have left in Southern American countries. Peruvian the artist Daniela Ortiz deliberately chooses a form of drawing that is reminiscent of indigenous and popular cultures of her country, Peru. She 
She also works on the manipulative use of drawings in historical documents. This kind of natura naturality or the neutral drawing language is also something that is um, visible in the drawings of Nidal Shamek, who also refers to the apparent objective representation of indigenous people in colonial narratives and history books. Kara Walker addresses the history of American slavery and racism through violent and unsettling imagery. With virtuosity, her drawing style deliberately, deliberately cites forms of 17th and 18th century Western art history. Thinking about the politics of drawing does not mean not only to look at artists who address, let's say, big social or political or historical themes or issues. If you understand the act of drawing as a seismographic process that makes visible what happens within us and around us, drawing allows us to visualize the conditions of the human body as such. As you can see in the work of Boriana Petkova, Joanna already showed you some works before, but drawing as well visualizes the way we communicate and interact with the world around us, as in the drawing performances of Stella Gebhardt. Against this background, drawing should be a very suitable tool when it comes to issues like representation of the body, particularly female bodies, non-normative bodies, queer bodies, marginalized bodies. The space of, of, the space of drawing as a space of freedom, also sexual freedom, is clearly visible in the vibrant and energetic works of Sufyan Ababri, or Tirdat Hashemi, but also in the soft, tender, and delicate drawings of Jesse Darling or Robert Gabris, drawing as a safe space. Therefore, drawing is definitely an ally when it comes to issues like intimacy or sexuality in general, as we can see in the subtle erotic drawings of Marlene Dumois or the explosive body scans of Andrea Eva Yuri. Tracy Emin explores the relation between pleasure, trauma, violence, and sexuality in her well-known monotypes and drawings. Drawing is a space that allows us to show our vulnerability, but it's a space of healing too. In the work of Phoebe Boswell, the wall drawings of her own body create a graphic landscape that embraces trauma and diasporic consciousness, sexuality and fragility, mental and physical health. Care work Parenthood, especially motherhood, is still a taboo in the art world. However, drawing seems to offer a space that allows us to talk about themes like the emotional and physical challenge of parenthood or the mental load, as we can see in some drawings of Luis Bourgeois or Sandra Vasquez de la Hora. Other artists, like Sarah Tritz, do not only include the presence of her family in her drawings, but she also clearly assumes her son's drawings as an inspiration and a reference. And artist groups like maternal fantasies even include their children in the process of drawing. <laughs> I would like would love to get deeper into this and I would also love to show you more examples and most of all I would love to show you 
more how those questions find an echo in my own works and drawings, but time is short, short today, so this is going to be another conference. Um, of course, we could say that these themes are all visible in other media forms as well. But after having gone together quickly through these examples, I would claim that certain topics are expressed more clearly, more angrily, more directly maybe, and often more courageously in drawing than in other media. I think drawing is particularly suitable to express thoughts and perspectives that are less visible elsewhere. Partly for very classical attributes, uh, part, sorry, partly for very classical reasons attributed to the medium. Drawing is nomadic and flexible. Drawing is easily transportable for, draw for artists working in multiple places or several cultures. It is a medium that can easily be practiced in different contexts or in public spaces or places where other forms of image production are forbidden. <laughs> Drawing is modest and crisis resistant. I don't know if you remember, and of course, I don't know exactly how the situation was here in England, but during the pandemic lockdown, drawing became suddenly very popular again, at least in France. The social media were suddenly full of drawings by artists who normally draw little or not at all. Especially in France, where the lockdown was very restrictive and artists were not allowed to go to their studios. This showed quite clearly drawing is really crisis resistant because you can do it almost anywhere, even if you are very restricted in terms of space. But even independent of the pandemic, in view of exploding rents and lack of affordable studios, drawing is also a crisis-proof medium in a broader sense. Drawing offers a space that most artists can afford, even in times of increasing precarity. And drawing can be very much, but to draw something, we don't need much. What we need is often lying around anyway, or it is at least easy to get and affordable. Since everything needed to draw is quickly at hand, it is also a faithful companion and early in intimate moments or in difficult ones. Like the written notes, it's immediate, or at least it can be. It's close to us, it's close to our experiences, it's close to our body, to our emotions. And drawing also often steps in and we are literally in a loss for words. We all know that art, despite some efforts, it's still very elitist. But drawing in some ways, I think, is the most democratic of the arts. During our youth or as a teenager, many of us encountered forms of drawing that were meaningful to us. In the interviews I've been doing since 2020 with artists from 
really of all kinds of ages and backgrounds about their drawing practice, it became very clear, especially for artists who do not come from a, let's say, bourgeois or economically or culturally privileged background, drawing is very often the first contact with art. Political art uh, drawings in newspapers, comic books in the bathroom of a befriended family, identity forming mangas or Czech TV cartoons for many of us, the first accessible mode of artistic expression is drawing. The history for an, the history of drawing, I think, is really for another, in a way, even how to say. Um, I think it's a re the, the history of drawing um, itself is a reason why the drawing today um, is a space or can be considered as a space of freedom and resistance because the history of drawing has been itself a history a story of struggle and of emancipa and emancipation despite the strong tendencies for autonomy the position of drawing in the history of art remains until today more or less marginalized this is kind of astonishing since the beginning of the drawing as you all know accompanies more or less the beginnings of the human cultural history if you have a look at the theoretical discourse on drawing through the last centuries, there's clearly a general recognition of the primacy of the line. With the kind of paradoxical consequence that drawing is declared as a basic technique, but therefore, as we all know, there's a tendency to reduce it to technique and to increasingly ascribe it, again, the character of study or practice. There have always been moments of emancipation. Joanna already talked about it, and I don't want to um, go too deep into art history, but you all know that in the 15th century, drawing really began, began to gain independence. Drawing reached its first peak of autonomy in the Italian Renaissance, and particularly in mannerism. In the Baroque and Rococo period, there was a kind of backlash. But and painting again dominated. But then in, I would say in the last 18th century, at latest, a new impulse for the autonomy of drawing came, amongst others, from the new development of colored cray crayons and pastels. Modern drawing, in any case, since the end of the 19th century, is characterized by a great freedom in the choice of graphic means. So we can say that through the centuries, Drawing is increasingly being recognized as an independent artistic expression, and many artists have, this, have deconstructed this academic hierarchy. But the long struggle to artistic independence is still reflected in the art system, and also um, Joanna talked about it, it's still uh, visible today. It's reflected on the prices at the art market, drawing is less exhibited or often reduced to formal questions. So yes, it gained autonomy, but it remains, in a way, a precarious medium. But being underestimated is not always a bad thing. Drawing does not try to get beyond its positions on the margins of the field of art. The post this position on the margins of the art system, the historical and ongoing underestimation of the medium allows drawing to develop freedom and spaces of discourse that are rarely found elsewhere. It allows uncommon and subjective perspectives on colonial history, migration, gender identity struggles, and or political movements. With Donna Haraway, we could also call this a situated approach, an approach that considers drawing as an emp emancipatory practice that aims to keep visible these traces the circumstances, the conditions, the reasons that make artists, artists draw, instead of erasing them. Contemporary drawing does not try to compensate for this kind of historical imbalance. Contemporary drawing doesn't try to catch up.
separate drawing uh, drawing does not to be in the center of the R system. Drawing simply changes the complex and becomes the term essential. Center that with great sensitivity and attention to space to voices and find little echo elsewhere in their art system. And I try to understand how the space is built. I try to understand it with my brain and with my eyes and with my hands. And I try to understand it by working on drawing about drawing and drawing. 